Juliet. From Joanne's Doggy Schmacks. And today we are making puppy canes. And they're our uh, holiday take on uh, candy canes. We have chopped mint in the lighter colored dough to give it that kind of peppermint taste. Yeah. And we've used beet juice for the red uh, cinnamon tasty part uh, because it's natural. Did not want to use a uh, red food dye. So I wanted you to see in advance what they look like because the recipe is a little more complicated than uh, is he really like <laughs> persistent? He just wants to uh -huh. eat them. It's, a, I'll, I'll put them aside. Uh, it's a little more complicated than most of the recipes that we make. Uh, so let me do that. Let me put this aside really quick. And Jake, Jake can put his focus elsewhere. And Juliet's going to do the honors. Uh, we're going to start with three cups of whole wheat flour and add a half a cup of non-fat dry milk. You know how milk is like a liquid? Usually, yes. How does it become like... How do they uh, dry it? Yeah. I don't know. Suck the liquid out somehow. Yeah. I would assume high temperature. Uh, you wouldn't want it be, to be too high. I think you would kill the proteins, but I know it's supposed to be really good for you and it lasts for a year and a half in your pantry. Wow, that's yeah, a long so, time. Yes, if you're ever out of milk, you're not really out of milk because you have powdered milk. <laughs> Okay, so you have one more thing to add in there. I'm going to have you do the reading again for me. How, what size is that? A half um, teaspoon. And it's baking powder this time. Did it all go in there? Uh, yeah. Okay, good. We'll put that there. So make sure the baking powder gets thoroughly mixed in there. Yeah. Okay, good. What we have here is one cup of chicken stock. It's really hard to find chicken stock in the uh, supermarket that doesn't have a bunch of salt and stuff, but I did find something organic and I think we're pretty good. I normally use uh, chicken stock that I've made myself, but oh, I wow. recently had a freezer purge, so we went store-bought. Okay, so you can put this aside for a sec, and you're going to uh, break these eggs and put their contents in here and then stir it all together. Just break the eggs from here. <laughs> <laughs> Good. It literally just went plop. Yep, so it did. And uh, there's a little puppy on the floor and his eyebrows went whoop when he heard it. <laughs> That's He's cute. like, they're cooking for me. Oh, I can see a little eggshell. That's okay. Like you said, but, oh, was that a double yolk? What was that? Was that two yolks? Possibly. Possibly, or it got cut in half? I don't know. I don't know either. Well, <laughs> they'll just be super rich if it's a double yolk. I've only ever heard of it. I thought it was uh, made up. I didn't know it was such a thing, or it was a thing. Maybe the double yolks are the smart chicks. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, I just slammed my microphone. That was really adorable. Okay, stir. Well, here's one they, yolk. They really go for it. I know, there's one yolk. Uh -huh. Okay, well that's a small one, so I think it just broke in half. Yeah. Just make a hole in the center here and slowly dump this in and mix. So a hole, we could just do that for the sure. center. Mm -hmm. And then, um, oh. Or how about I'll, I'll pour and you mix. Let's do it okay. that way. Uh, use the fork instead, because it's going to get all clumped up inside the whisk. Okay. Hard to believe this is going to be a candy cane, right? Yeah, it looks more like maybe a pizza. <laughs> okay, very much so, very much so. It could be a pizza. I think you would just have to add cheese. Cheese and salt. But dogs can't have salt, so pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> okay, so let's put this over here. Do you want me to take over for a little bit? Uh, sure. Okay. 
and I will try and be calm and not get <laughs> flour all over the counter. Yeah. Yes, you seem to have a much more patience than I do. Eh, I, I don't know. Maybe if you saw me somewhere else, then... Like on the soccer field? Yeah. Yeah. I think we can... <laughs> we can just stab me. Rawr! <laughs> Okay, we're gonna dump this here and we're gonna get all that loose stuff attached. So you know, well, you have to use your hands and you have to squeeze. Oops, and this is why I went to get this. Let me pick this up. Or can you do it for me? Pick this up a little bit. Thanks. Okay, there we go. And now it won't slide. There. Okay. I still see. Little. Smooshy smush. It's fun doing this. It's a workout. After a while, it's definitely a workout. Yeah. So candy canes have been around for a while, evidently. Um, I think they started out in the six, 17th century. So it's the mid 1600s. Uh, peppermint flavor was around for a while, yeah. but candy was not. The process of melting sugar and making it be able to stretch hadn't uh, come about yet. So once it did, uh, all sorts of different candy shapes were developed, and there's some sort of a, a rumor or a tall tale that there was a priest or somebody who invented the uh, candy to keep his students quiet but we don't really know what we do know is in this country in the mid 1800s a german immigrant hung candy canes from christmas tree uh branches yeah and ever since then they've been popular in this country all right so massage the dough let's put a little more on here because we're going to start rolling yeah. and you know what happens when it doesn't have a little dusting on it, it gets all sticky. Yeah. But this looks kind of perfect, huh? Yeah, it really does. You're becoming a dough specialist. Yes, and for a tip, the key number one is you really want to get into there. So if you're a good massager, then you would be good at making dough. I think so. So what's going to happen is we're going to roll this out Actually, we're not rolling it out yet. Let's put it back into the ball. I was doing it wrong. Or you know what? Let's just do it this way. One's gonna be red and one's gonna have the uh, mint in it. You're supposed to take the big ball and cut it in half. Well, I forgot, okay? So we're just doing a little different option. <laughs> so roll it into a ball though. Which and one am I doing? I think the, the one with the beet juice is really difficult. It's a pain, to be honest. It would be so much easier to use red dye, but it's just not good for your dogs. I just can't do it. So let, let me give you this to put in here. Okay. This is the chopped up mint. Here, start just poking it in there and smooshing it around, like okay. get it all mixed in. And I'll start doing that with the beet juice. Uh, one of the things I noticed since I made these in advance, the beet juice makes the worms that you end up rolling up, out fatter um, and harder to maneuver than the other half of the dough. So I looked it up to see what the heck was happening. Should I um, mix it? Uh-huh, yeah, as much as you can. Get it all mixed up. The moisture uh, causes the baking powder to cause the dough to expand a bit. So you find yourself between a rock and a hard place in that you need a lot of beet juice to make it red, but the more juice you put in there, the fatter your little worms that you're rolling out get, and the less and less like a candy cane it looks. So I did devise a little cheat, which I will show you in a minute. Um, it really, I just ended up at the end painting a little bit of the red dye, uh, the beet, juice on my candy cane. Well, you are a very good artist, so. <laughs> Thank you for that. 
this isn't as red as I would like, but since I know I'm gonna paint I it think we could end, use more of the... Oh, you need some, yeah, for yeah. sure. Lots of peanut butter. Yeah, we're, we're not, <laughs> really came through. Oh, wait. Nope, that was wrong we, recipe. No, yeah, we don't want to use peanut butter today. That's just the wheat and um, chicken stock. So throw it down here too. And we're going to start with yours. We're just going to roll yours out for now. And then we'll cut it to get it into manageable size that we can roll our worms. Doesn't that sound lovely? Yours is really good, but um, mine's still good. Could I have a little more? Yeah. <laughs> what I'm thinking is maybe the mint added some moisture that, uh, wow, yeah. look at this. We need a little more even. <laughs> All right, at this point, I'm gonna just get an example of what we're gonna be doing. These are pre-rolled. <laughs> Sounds like I'm rolling tobacco. Pre-rolled dough. It's still. Here, let me see. I don't know if it's me or. No, it's never you. It's always the dough. The dough has a mind of its own. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to be salty. It's, you know, the dough is just so moody. It depends on the time of day or you're working with it, whether it's gonna roll out or not. Okay. That looks good. Much better. I think it was me. All right, so I am gonna just roll this because I think that we may cheat a little bit and just use these pre-made ones. What do you think? That'd yeah. be a little more fun, I think. A little more fun for our viewers too, but I wanna show how you get to this point. So we would be doing this with the red uh, dough also, but let's just do this one to start. So we're just gonna cut. And then. We uh, roll them like that. Exactly, first you make a ball. Get rid of this. Uh, we might have to take a little break here because we both have really sticky really hands. <laughs> and we are about to do the next stage, uh, which is creating what I call the worms, <laughs> which is terrible, but we're going to have the mint part of the candy cane, the puppy cane, and the beet part of the puppy cane. As you can see, probably I shouldn't have put it on a red plate. It doesn't look very red. And my secret is to paint beet juice on at the very end before we stick it in the oven. <laughs> so this is what we do. We take part of this strip. You don't want it to be too big because then it'll be too fat, the dough. And you need to be able to twist it around uh, the red strip. So we make a ball. Yeah, and then we roll it out like this. Exactly. Get it started that way. And it's kind of stretchy, right? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And we made the dough really good. Yes, the dough is perfect. Believe it or not, we struggled a little bit, but it's perfect. And then for me, your hands are smaller than mine, so theoretically you're not going to have as long, but it's already yours is longer than mine. You put your hands together and you roll with equal pressure, uh, roll up to your finger joints uh, and just keep pressing. When you do that, you run the risk, when you use only one hand, you run the risk of having a break. So you have to acquire, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Apply equal pressure on both sides. Because if you're only doing one side and the other side is flopping around, it gets a break. That's plenty right there. You, you've got a perfect one. You're Speedy Gonzalez there. <laughs> How long is mine? A long. Okay, so that's mine, it. It's 23 centimeters. Oh, good for you. And good for you, you can see that small. All right, this one, I used too much dough, so I'm pinching it in half, and I'm gonna roll it again. Look at that. 
Yes, and what you're doing, you're playing, but you could do that. You could make a, a cookie. You could shape it any way you want. You could make a bow tie if you want. Or a mustache. A mustache. If you want to do a test one, you may. But meanwhile, <laughs> Santa, practicing for Santa. Let us do our first wrap. Okay. Where should I put this put piece of here. art? That's for you. This is for me. Put this over here for now. And we're gonna wrap. This is a nice thin one. That one stays straight. So you're gonna kind of pinch at the top. Like this? Mm hmm And you're gonna hold it up in front of you. Like this. One is bigger than the yet. Doesn't matter, because you can chop it off at the end. And you want one to be bigger if you can. See what I'm doing? Yeah. Uh, because it's gonna need more space as it wraps around. It's gonna need more length as it wraps around. And then when you get to the bottom, you pinch it tight, and then you... This one turned out pretty nice. Yeah, I think it did. Yay! Okay, and then this is a, a nice wrap. Would you so want we one? pinch it like this? Mm -hmm, that's fine. Wow, look at yours. I uh, it. No, it's wonderful. Wow, mine's all loosey-goosey. Look at yours. Okay, so there you go. Beautiful. Same one. That's what Jake says too. Okay, so you just did it a little tighter. I like that. I'm gonna show you some of the other attempts that I made. And they're not terrible, but this one I just think is really pleasing. And one of the things that makes it even more visually appealing is to put an egg wash on it before you put it in the oven because it's going to go into the oven at 350 degrees for uh, 12 minutes. It takes a lot of time for the prep, but the cooking is like zippy zip, which is really nice. So let's get the egg wash going. And you've all already seen what they look like when they come out of the oven, so I'm just gonna demonstrate. Uh, one other thing first that I almost forgot. We want to make the red redder. So we are going to, I shouldn't do this on wood because it could stain because it's beet juice. You want to do the honors? Sure. Okay, let me move this. And you can see uh, as it dries, it gets harder and harder to see which is the red, but when you put the beet juice on there, it really pops. Yeah, it does. And this one's too long here, so like I said, you can just cut off a part if you don't like it. But one side is going to be um, redder Clean. than the other exactly. side. Exactly, I did notice that, but I didn't think that was a big deal. To be honest, the dogs won't notice. So let me line up uh, what we have. As you paint that, a totally different shape. Um, made with gluten free flour. Uh, I think if you're making sugar canes for your dogs, not sugar canes, candy canes, uh, these would be fine in the house, but they're very, very brittle. So I wouldn't recommend making them for a gift, uh, but obviously very easy. Same uh, dough recipe. And then we also have the finished ones that I showed you. And I have one more batch, but I have to depart quickly. It's really fun to paint the uh, dough. You're doing a great job. Yeah, and you're obviously a natural. Your your sugar canes are you keep calling them sugar canes. Candy canes. Candy canes. Oh no, Jakey Jake. Are beautiful. And I just wanted to show you these. This was my initial. 
Those are pretty all doughy. I have to do, all, all I have to say is pay attention when you're baking. You can't just randomly throw ingredients in a bowl and expect it to look like anything. That's what I did. So failure, success. We'll be back uh, in a little bit and we're gonna let uh, Jake, who has not tried this yet, uh, taste one of these. And it's the ultimate test. Sit pretty, good boy. What do you think? I think he likes them. They're a success. What I like is that he's actually chewing it instead of swallowing it whole. You want to ask him to do something for that? Um, lay down, crawl. <laughs> good boy, you did, you did good enough. Yay! Thank you for watching. Uh, here comes Tori. Uh, I'll give her one off camera. You've had a lot to eat today, young lady. Um, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. And if you don't mind, give us a like. Thanks.